We're back to the Total Tutor Show, powered by the Simply G Media Network. Again, TotalTutor.net for more information. Twitter, Total Tutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook, and also SimplyG.com. That's SimplyG.com to learn more about the... G.J. Reynolds is the playful and powerful warrior, and I'm really excited to welcome the program former Amazing Race contestant Ryan Dance and Ryan, uh, author now as well. Ryan, thanks for calling. Thanks for having me. Exciting times. Uh, today is the day. The book drops officially on Amazon today, or at least ships out today. Oh, fantastic. We'll make sure we get yeah. it out in syndication this week, and then you can talk about it. So, I mean, it's been a labor of love, and it's finally finished. And I mean, it's got to make you feel great. Yeah, I mean, you say the words labor of love, and you might as well really emphasize labor. Um, when I took this project on, when it came to me last year, I was actually, um, I was approached by the publisher and the editor um, because of my sort of time on The Amazing Race and my background being both an attorney and a jujitsu kind of practitioner, and the publisher says, hey, you know, we want to, we're the largest publisher of legal materials in the world, but we need to diversify our readership and our audience, and we're going to start to think about work-life balance books, and we think, you know, your background in jiu-jitsu and law might make a great fit, and if you want to talk about stories from your reality TV days, whether that was The Apprentice or Amazing Race, please do so. Um, and so that was last Basically a year ago, that was last December, and we went through the, um, they invited me or they requested that I put a formal proposal together. I did that. It took a couple weeks, and that got basically passed through, no questions asked. Um, and I started writing last, or this past January, and I wrote all the way through June about four to five days a week, about four to five hours a day, either at Starbucks or in my cabin in Tahoe. And, um, yeah, that's why I was saying earlier, labor over love. I was just, <laughs> I mean, it is a whole nother world to write a book. I was used to writing at most maybe 500 words here and there for whatever travel writing I was doing or blogging. But, you know, I had no idea what I was getting into. <laughs> Ryan, I've interviewed so many authors because of my Author's Corner show, and I uh, definitely will have to have you back to talk more about the book on Author's Corner in a couple months and give us an update of, you know, the whole book signing. But they talk about it's a process, and uh, you constantly uh, try to schedule time to write. I'm still working on my first book, and it's been a year since I've been working on my first book, and everyone's telling me, oh, you need to do your memoir now, Neil. And I'm like, gosh. oh, gosh, well, you know, because the memoir is the one that's going to make all the money. And I'm like, well, right. yeah, but when am I going to have time to do that one? But the time's the thing, and especially when you have your career, and, and how did you find the time to write? It, it, it's, well, that's the thing. I mean, you, you, like I said, the, you start with a kind of a proposal which skeleton outlines the book, right? So I said, here's what I think the chapters and the ordering should look like. And I put a, you know, call it, you know, a few sentences about each chapter. And that's where I really started from. And some chapters for me were much easier. Like I could write about anything that I experienced in my life, whether it was going through the divorce, right? Because I experienced that firsthand. I didn't need to research that. That right. was going to come from, come from within. So I could do that. I could work on that. And I kind of had an idea how long it would take. Where I got into major malfunctions was when I would start to write about, you know, a healthy lifestyle and talk about, let's say, diet. Well, every time I say something, I have to sort of be able to substantiate it. And so that requires research. And where I got screwed up was, you know, I'd write for an hour and then I'd have to research everything I was writing for uh, four hours. It, that's, and, uh, that's, uh, that goes back to your lawyer days. Come on, Ryan. Yeah, I know. I never had a right. I never had a site. Like at least in lawyer days, you could cite online with you know Westlaw or LexisNexis, and that's manageable. <laughs> but when you're citing, so what would happen would be I would cite to something, and let's say I found a great article on Livestrong website. Well, that that article was probably you know or was most definitely taken from another source. So I would have to go back and find the original source from my original source. And you can imagine, you know, trying to track things down that were written in print that were not available online. It's just, it's a total cluster. So, you know, lesson learned, but you know, now I know how to budget time better when it comes to writing. Well, and so let's get to the book as, again, 14 minutes sure. is not enough time for Ryan, but I'm already offering you a deal. I got a Biggest Loser uh, contestant who is a uh, finalist who is uh, kind of giving the updates of what's going on. So let's kind of get you as the prognosticator for The Amazing Race, if you'd be interested in doing that, and come on on a, a quarterly basis to update, you know, what your thoughts are to kind of get yeah. that whole thing 
uh, continued. And I, I, maybe we can also talk about life about The Apprentice, too, because I'm a huge fan of The Celebrity Apprentice. But let's go. Sure. We'll, we'll talk about that later. What's, now, we're talking about the book, the whole book. Now, it, mix, it mixes. Is it pretty much a memoir, in your opinion? Because when know, we, we were talking first, it didn't seem like it was going to be a memoir the last time I had you on. Yeah, it didn't seem like that to me either. But, uh, you know, the way that the book sort of weaves in and out of my life, you know, we talk about success and failure, whether that for me was in jiu-jitsu or in my personal life, having gone through a divorce and really kind of opening up about the lessons learned from within. I had a really hard time, and I, I didn't know I battled with how much to reveal. And looking back and having read this book now a number of times just through the editing process, my sense is I probably revealed a little too much more, you know, because when you're writing, you're not writing an entire book at once. So you write in parts, and then it's the book is really the sum of all these parts, whether those parts are chapters or subchapters. So I really kind of let it all out, and um, I used jujitsu to kind of balance my mind and my body out when I was going through some difficult times, both in, in, in business and in, in my personal life. And so I really kind of leaned on this sort of um, sport, this art. For me, I didn't really have much other outlet. You know, I was either working or I wasn't working, and I didn't have anything else. That was just sort of my life, you know, five years ago. And I, when I found jujitsu, it just sort of blew my mind. It opened my mind and my body and my sort of spirit or soul to something else. And I found this camaraderie in these people, you know, from all walks of life. And, and I know for a lot of people, we get caught up in our own day-to-days, and sometimes we maintain friendships or relationships that might be negative or contaminating. And you don't realize it, or if you do, you don't know how to change it or you don't want to change it because, hey, I've known this person for 10 years or 15 years, so therefore they have to stay in my life. And I just kind of had this, you know, come to Jesus moment, if you will. And I just decided I don't want people like that in my life, whether it was people I was living with or people I was spending time with. And I got to see another group of people through jujitsu. Maybe they were a construction worker. Maybe it was my, you know, orthopedic surgeon. You wouldn't know because everyone is sort of the same when they cross over that threshold. And I really enjoyed. Everyone was sort of in the same mindset I was. And they want to purify their mind, and they want to think clearly and abstractly. And there's this whole revelation, and it was really powerful. And so I was able to capture that in the book, and I kind of shared stories along the way. Um, you know, and how it parlayed that into some good business decisions just by thinking differently for the first time. And as an attorney, I was conditioned, right, in law school and, and my first few jobs in law and how I was counsel. I was conditioned to think kind of within a certain structure. And I, I compared it in the book to kind of a train traveling or lumbering down a track. Well, after I found jujitsu and, you know, I had these wonderful physical manifestations from jiu-jitsu. My body changed, and the way, the way that my mind sort of got clarity um, from jiu-jitsu, believe it or not, I, I try to relate that, and that started to carry over into the way I started thinking more regularly. I just became much more creative. I became a happier person. I sort of lost this ego that I didn't really realize right, I had, exactly. or if I did realize it, I wasn't going to do anything about it because, hey, my life was pretty good up to a certain point. Um, and all that changed with, with jiu-jitsu. So I just kind of spent a lot of time kind of sharing the benefits of the sport, whether for me it was physically, my body changing, getting very healthy. I have, you know, on my dad's side of the family, I have heart history issues. On my mom's side, you know, tremendous cancer issues um, that have affected us. So I have to be vigilant with my own health. Um, and then mentally speaking, and I've kind of alluded to how my mind started working differently and yes. thinking differently. And then more kind of spiritually or emotionally, sort of the depths that I, that I went through, whether it was camaraderie or kind of a loss of ego or kind of understanding my purpose a little bit better, um, what my goals were, just having some sense, some, some sense of clarity and taking a step back in life. So, yeah, that's really the essence of the book. People say, well, it's called jiu-jitsu jurisprudence, so you've got to be talking just about jiu-jitsu for lawyers. And I said, no, 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 you know, maybe... Over time, I'll think about having really wanting to rewrite that title, but that ultimately was kind of what the publisher yeah. wanted. It's, yeah, it's what started it, right, Ryan? And then it became a memoir. It became your story. It became a, exactly. a way that you use jiu-jitsu and athletics to clear your mind from all the difficulties you've had in your life. That's right. <laughs> Even the That's one right. that I'm mentioning now, I guess the girlfriend that you had on The Amazing Grace is no longer around anymore either. So we have these situations, Ryan, in so many ways that we ha- uh, are shaped by it, but because we're centered, we have something that is our focus. We understand that there's going to be pitfalls in our life, but we have to keep persevering. 
Right. Yeah. How are you going to handle that stuff? So when you, we know what's going to happen, whether it's going to be the loss of a loved one or maybe lost in, you know, a job or, you know, something kind of earth rattling, which is different for each of us. How are you going to get through that? Where are you going to lean on? You know, for me, for a long time, it was on external things and factors, you know, getting my comfort and solace from outside. And what I found in jujitsu was all of a sudden I started finding all these things within me that I didn't know were there. I didn't know I could be as strong as I was. And you're saying, well, how does, how does a sport do that? Right. Well, for me, it's not just a sport. For me, it's a place I go for an hour every day. And I would say, most people would say, oh, so you just turn your mind off and you just let go. Well, for me, I'm really kind of connected for the first time. Um, I think I go through most of the times of the day sort of in this kind of foggy state where, yeah, I'm operating, yeah, I'm having communications, yeah, I'm functioning. But it's really in jiu-jitsu where all of a sudden I'm really locked in into my mind and my body. And it's a really powerful thing. And from, from that, for me, I've gotten a real sense of self. And I really enjoy the person I am now because of that. I just, I, it's just a real growth um, event right. in my life. It's a journey, right? It's not about the belt around exactly. my waist. It's not, about, it's not about tournaments that I've won or whatever. It's really kind of the process and the journey. Um, and a lot of people get that with their kids, right? Or they, get, they find something in life that gives them a bigger purpose than themselves. I don't have children. So I found jujitsu as a, sort of that kind of an outlet right. for me, where I really thrust myself into something bigger than me, and that's what it's been. And it helps you in the process, like you said, in law, because law there's ups and downs too. You're going to lose cases, you're going to win cases, you're going to have clients that fire you. It's just all the game of life. But then you get to go out there and you you practice your sport every day, and it keeps you off of uh, a lot of the life that life gets in the way that causes people to have heart disease, causes people to have cancer. Causes causes people to be overweight, causes people to have depression. But by you having that center, which is the sport, you're able to hone your focus on something else. And you want people to learn more about the sport, which I don't know I do. a ton about. And uh, that's the other goal of the book. So, Ryan, uh, where can we find information on purchasing the book? And l- like I said, we'll stay in touch uh, via Twitter. I don't know about when the next season of The Amazing Race, if it's over or what, if you want to give prognostication. Have you been watching any of it lately? Or I, I have. I've actually been blogging about it. I, I kind of took a season off after my season last year. I didn't really get too attached to the season after mine, but this season I kind of looked at it through new uh, new glasses, and I really enjoyed this season um, from a TV standpoint. I think the, the cast is very female-driven this season. You don't have a lot of strong male characters, whereas a lot of the women, whether they're all women teams or even just a female partner on a male-female team, are it's a really strong season for the women. I've really enjoyed watching that because that's not traditionally – how the you know casting has gone, um, but the locations have been good. Some of the tasks have been phenomenal. Last week they were in Vienna, and one of the tasks was to sing with the boys' choir in German or in you know Viennese. I don't even know what the language is in, <laughs> in Austria, but um, it, it, it was fascinating because you know usually you see people that have to perform a, ta- a task physical, and it's either strength related or or coordination with dancing, let's say. But in this case it was singing, and not only singing. But singing in tune, learning a new language and the words, and uh, so I was just mesmerized by that. And thank God we didn't get that. When we were on the race. <laughs> well, well, what's what's so that's interesting that I brought up. Hey, I want you to come on uh, on a quarterly basis or monthly basis, depending on your schedule, to talk about the amazing race because uh, you have a blog on it. I, I like I said, I did the same thing for the Biggest Loser. Two awesome reality shows, uh, and Apprentice as well. I, I mean, I don't yeah. know when the Celebrity Apprentice is coming out, but it's my favorite show. I had uh, I had uh, John. Rich on the show, and he was just a tremendous guy. I hope to have more of the former uh, celebrities. But uh, where can we purchase the book, Ryan? Especially, it's now out on Amazon, and I know you're excited to finally, uh, your labor of love is finished now. It's time to promote it, promote it. But where, right. where can we purchase the book? Yeah, I mean, all you would really need to do is just kind of Google jujitsu, which is two words, J-I-U, and then jitsu, J-I-T-S-U, and then the last word is jurisprudence. And you just type that in, and it'll pop up the first link. will be probably an Amazon link to the book, and I think it's 20 bucks, and it makes a great stocking stuffer for the holidays, and um, it really applies to all professionals. If you know someone that's sitting behind a desk and is starting to lose their mind or they just don't seem like themselves and they want some perspective, maybe some clarity, maybe they want to find a new hobby, um, I think a lot of this kind of anecdotes that I share, even going to some stories from The Amazing Race, you know, talking about getting eliminated in, in the rain in Amsterdam after four horrific.
horrific flight issues and missing out on $2 million um, and sort of taking a step back and kind of re- revisiting that moment and some other stuff that happened on the race that wasn't shown on TV. Um, you know, it's 200 pages. It's it's not going to win the Nobel Prize for anything, but um, it's a fun read. And I think there's a lot of, you know, pertinent information about sort of, you know, life through someone else's eyes and, and maybe some uh, failure to success stories as well. Well, Ryan, thanks for calling. And like I said, you're back. You're going to be our uh, prognosticator and uh, and evaluating, again, what's going on with the amazing race. So thanks for calling and best of luck with the book. I know you're going to have success and uh, great success in life. Good talking to you, Ryan. Thanks, Neil. I always enjoy talking to you. All the best. All right. Take care, Ryan. Okay. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. You're listening to the Toll Education Celebrity Show powered by Simply G Media Network. And we'll be back in just a moment.